Hi, Bill Barber from Polygon here. In this video, we're going to be looking at how to properly light a scene with a Polygon HDR in Cinema 4D with the physical renderer. Okay, so this is the scene that we're gonna be using today. It's a simple model of a house, basically, uh, with a camera and yeah, that's about it. So, first thing we need to do is bring in our files. So I'm going to jump down to my uh, folder here and inside I have, I'm just gonna change it to list view, a few different files. So I've downloaded the 16K EXR and the 16K JPEG um, of this particular HDR, as well as the 2K EXR. And uh, yeah, we're gonna go through the route of doing a, a few different things. First of all, I'm gonna bring in the 16K uh, HDR, which will take a moment, because it's a huge, huge file. Okay, with that in place, I'm also going to grab the 2K and the uh, 16K JPEG and drag those in as well. Okay, so once they're all loaded up and we've got our previews there, um, just for keeping track of things, that's the 16K EXR, that's the 2K EXR, and that is the JPEG, I think. No, that's the 2K EXR, that's the JPEG. Right, we're good. <laughs> so, um, to start off with, we're just going to use the 16K EXR to light our scene and provide the backgrounds. So this is like a, a very basic HDR setup. So we'll add in a sky, like so, drag our high resolution EXR onto it, give it a moment to think. Um, I'm also going to rotate it about because I remember that the lighting looks particularly good from just about that angle. Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll give that a render now. Okay, so um, I've got the settings relatively low, which is why we're getting kind of a, a blotchy sort of look there. But lighting-wise, that's that's kind of what I what I want. The uh, the shadow just kind of coming off from the from the gar uh, garage area there. Um, it's it's ideal. What isn't ideal uh, are two things. One, the backdrop really doesn't match the scene whatsoever. We've got this giant building in the background. Um, yeah, not <laughs> not what we need. Um, also, using this file is a nightmare for, um, in terms of system resources. Uh, it, yes, it provides a nice high resolution backdrop, um, but it's like three, four gig of memory usage just for the, uh, just for the lighting, which it really isn't ideal. So, we're going to do away with that 16K EXR, and what I'm gonna use instead is the 2K one. Which I believe was this file, yes. So we'll drop that on the sky instead, and that will provide our lighting. And I'll just do another test render, but as you'll see, the difference between the two is almost nothing. Okay, so the uh, render's finished, and as you can see, if I compare between the two, there's almost no difference whatsoever. Perhaps a, a slight uh, drop in intensity, but Considering the difference in file size, um, it's a price I'd happily pay. Um, the two problems we do have is one, the background now looks blurry, uh, and two, it's, it's not the background that we want anyway. So let's get uh, to fixing that. What I'm going to do is add in another sky, and I'll just give this a more meaningful name. So we'll call this backdrop. Maybe try and spell it right. And we'll call this lighting. Now into the backdrop, I'm going to drop in the JPEG, which was this one. Now remember, this is 16K, so we're still gonna get a really nice high resolution backdrop. Um, and what it will allow us to do is also pick a different part of it. So we were about here. Now, in the case of this particular render, it doesn't really matter where I put this sky, because um, I mostly want a blue sky. Um, as my backdrop. Um, so you can't really tell where the shadows are or anything like that. But if you were including backdrop elements but wanted to rotate this a little bit away from where the lighting was, do bear in mind you don't want to go too far because you want the any shadows that are in the backdrop to, to make sense with the rest of your lighting. But I'm going to put that about there and maybe down a little bit there. So I've just got nice blue sky. But if we render now, that JPEG is going to completely replace the EXR, and a JPEG can't light the scene, uh, and we'll end up with uh, with seeing nothing. 
so the way to fix that, in fact, I'm going to demonstrate. Hold on. Just turn on this region a little bit, shrink it down so we're only seeing that. And you see how the, uh, maybe that area. Yes, there we go. So we've lost all the lighting from our scene because a JPEG just can't do the job. Okay. So what we're going to do is jump into this JPEG um, and I'm going to go to illumination and I'm going to turn off GI and receive GI and basically everything. So now it's not lighting our scene at all. We're literally just getting the background from it. However, we, we obviously need to light our scene as well. <laughs> so to do that, jump over to basic and just turn on transparency. What that will do is allow the lighting from the original HDR to, to still come through, light our scene, but we'll be getting the backdrop from this secondary sky, yeah? And uh, yeah, that's about it. So what I'll do now is turn off the interactive rendering. I'll render this out and uh, we, we should be getting the result that we're after. And there we go. We've now got the lighting from the EXR, the backdrop from the JPEG, and uh, the scene's looking good and ready to start adding in some materials. So in summary, we've downloaded some HDR files from polygon.com, brought them into Cinema 4D, used a low resolution EXR to light our scene, whilst using a high resolution JPEG to provide the backdrop.